Have you any complaints apart from the fact that one can see that something is not quite... Uh, not really. Nothing particularly world-shaking. Do you have any swelling, pain or cramp during the night? Well, yes, sometimes I have some cramp at night, and but not that bad. Do you have to get up to... Uh, yes, I do. I have to take a few paces. You take a few paces and then feel better? Yes. And have you perhaps noticed that you have that so-called feeling of restlessness in your legs? For example, after sitting for a longer period or going on a longer journey, that's to say, you have a disturbing feeling in your legs, that you have to move them or change your position and then... Well, yes, actually, I do have this sort of feeling. This is called the restless legs syndrome. Yes. And if it's a very warm day, for instance, the air temperature is high and your work requires you to sit or stand for quite a while, you perhaps feel that one of your legs, or both of them, somehow feel heavier at the end of the day, as if water has accumulated in them. Yes, and they start to swell. Around the ankles? Yes, exactly. When I put my pumps on in the morning, I find they've already become a bit tighter towards the afternoon. That's right, and uh, that's one of the symptoms for venous insufficiency, the inability of the venous blood circulation to flow properly. We refer to this as the heavy legs syndrome. Some of the patients say that they feel as if they had a bucket of water in their leg or even in both of them. Well, you see, when we were talking at the beginning, you said that you did not have any complaints, but when we took a closer look, the symptoms became apparent, didn't they? It's a very good thing to treat an illness the moment it becomes apparent, that is, before it has fully developed as this is the only way to prevent dangerous complications. It was very sensible of you to decide to have it treated before developing any particularly noticeable varicose veins. So let's find out whether these symptoms you mentioned are also confirmed in the ultrasound examination that we are now going to carry out. Here we have two veins. This vein is the so-called vena saphena magna, or great saphenous vein. The large vein in the leg that empties into the vena femularis here, at this point. And we will soon see whether it is functioning properly or not. Here, at this point, it's working effectively. And here, at this point, one can see the reflux very clearly. It's the reflux wave. And this is where the vena saphena magna ends. It is possible to see the fascia very clearly, the fascia of the vena saphena magna. Here it leaves the fascia, and here it is already running outside the fascia. Here we have a lateral vein of the vena saphena magna. And at this point, the vena saphena magna, the large vein in the leg and the longest vein in the body, leaves its fascia and flows into a lateral vein. Now we will look and see if it's functioning properly. No, it isn't. Oh, there is a very long reflux. Let's make a note of its course so that we can find it again later on. And here, there is a considerably greater reflux. Here we have the first section of the vena saphena magna on both sides. About one third of the vein is insufficient. 
Then the backward blood flow goes into the lateral vein of the vena saphena magna and the side branch that runs under the skin, subdermally, is insufficient down to below the knee. This means that the surgical treatment will need to occlude the lateral vein that is insufficient and the most susceptible to causing varicose veins later on. And also the first section of the insufficient trunk that supplies this lateral vein. We ought to do it. Yes, and now. Getting ready. I'll give you an anesthetic. I'll give you an anesthetic so that you don't feel any pain. Now I'm going to numb the vein along its entire length. This is the most unpleasant part of the surgical treatment. If this hurts you, please let me know and then I will step up the anesthesia, okay? Please put your leg up. 